if your life pattern is a life pattern of hurry, what you're going to find out is that hurry is an enemy of those things. If you'd like to follow the process of turning a block of wood like this into a guitar like this, then you've come to the right place. And if you would like to see me give this guitar away, click subscribe, hit the bell. It looks like I'm going to be getting myself an apprentice. I am you? going to be routing out the interior portions of these guitars that are going to Mr. X. As long as I have a cool guitar by the end of this. In planning to route out the hollow portion or to chamber these guitars, I have put a template together a long time ago that's got this routed so that I can route out the area. But there's a few things that you really need to think about if you're going to be routing out and if you're gonna be shaping a guitar body so that you have a semi-hollow guitar body. I've done a cross section. If this were the cross section of this guitar body here, I've got a quarter of an inch, so I'm gonna be routing down and leaving a quarter of an inch down below on each of these bodies on the inside. There will be a quarter inch on the outside portion of the top and the bottom. The width at the narrowest of the walls, of these side walls, the narrowest point is uh, a half an inch. And then we will be routing off a corner of these, of these bodies so that they look a little bit like that original body. Which, so what I need to make sure of when I'm doing this cut here is I don't want to, if I were to cut a little too deep, say I came into this area, all of a sudden I would have cut all the way through to where it's hollow and that top piece would just fall, fall into the body. Not something we want to do. Hey, Pythagorean theorem, it comes into play here. I can make these at five eighths of an inch, which I've talked about before. And so then that leaves me plenty of room for strength in my wood so that I don't have to worry about these bodies falling apart. Okay. Why don't we take a little bit to go up to the garage, well, out my driveway actually, and let's route out, hollow out these bodies. Again, I'm always checking the depth of my bit, making sure that I'm going to leave a quarter of an inch as I continue to go down deeper. I just start with a little bit for first and then I'll go deeper down till I leave a quarter of an inch of thickness. Just like that, I've got them all chambered. Just like that, meaning it's been about three hours. That's the reality of this, taking the small little ones, and I had four of these to do. And yeah, it took me almost three hours to set them up, get them ready, make sure that I wasn't going too deep. I'll use sandpaper inside these to smooth them off. And then I need to put in my sound port holes yet, do a little sanding in there and then I can glue them together. So that's where we're at with this. Let's go check in with Corwin and see how he's doing. All right, so back here with Corwin again. It's been a week later. What we're gonna do today now is we're going to make this two pieces. So we're gonna cut this right down the middle and then we are going to cut our strips that are gonna go in amongst it because we're gonna have like racing stripes going down the middle of this Telecaster. We are going to use some very simple tools to make these cuts. You would typically just use a table saw for this and I just sold my table saw because my table saw kind of stunk. It wasn't the best table saw, so I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna wait and get a better one someday. So we're gonna do it with the circle saw, but to do that, we need to make sure that we have an ex a really straight line, so. 
I'm going to walk you through how we're going to do that. I guess the first thing you can do is just measure measure the halfway point. I'm going to put this in between the two tables because we're going to cut right down the middle. I'm going to put this just a little closer together. You want to make sure that your blade is square because we don't want it in an angle. So I'm just checking it and it looks square. Yep. Blade is square. Okay, so our blade is square. What I need to do is measure this side to the blade, which is exactly one inch, and that's including this metal piece here. Because okay. what we're actually looking to do is we need this to be as wide as this, yeah. and this at its widest, one foot, three quarters of an inch at its widest, this, is 10 and 3 quarters and so we basically need two inches that we're going to be adding in here. Okay. Then, this is going to be our fence line. So well this maple appears to be too hard for my for my battery craftsman skill saw so I'm gonna to have to go to the electric. So once again I'm gonna check this that looks square. That actually looked like it cut really well. Yeah. I know I, I got off down here and that was because of the that was with the yeah. other saw. I knew that had happened. But actually that looks to be pretty dang good. Your middle line is going to stay the middle line. It doesn't matter if those outside edges are wider or narrower. Okay. All we have to worry about is this line. So we're we're just fine. So this is going to help you see the the curly. Yep. So you kind of have to look at it quick here. <laughs> There's some nice curl yeah. down here for sure. And there's some nice curl in here too, but boy, right in there probably, was kind of Yeah, good. probably up there then. And actually, yeah, I think these curl kind of come like this. You see that? Yeah. This way would be down, would be like, yeah, it was just like you've got it there, kind of more like that. Yeah. Okay, I think we're ready here. So we got Corman on one side, I'm on the other side here. One of the reason why we're doing it on my desktop is because this is flat, and so that's why. I want to keep everything flat. Um, these are going to come into the middle kind of like this. Okay. My thought here is I'm going to do one side. You can do the other side. Which, um, when we get to the wenge, of course, you need to make sure that, okay, we're looking at this. So you, this is going to be glue. So what you're going to do is you're going to put a thin layer of glue on this, thin layer of glue on this, hook them together. Thin layer of glue on this, thin layer of glue on this, together, and I'm going to do the same thing over here, um, making sure that we're doing this right with everything. And so we can both do it, but I'll just you just got to make sure that you know which sides you're gluing together. Now, when I do the maple, it's going to be just fine using my fingers. I am not going to do that with the wenge. So you can do what I just did there, and then we just make a thin layer because we're going to glue both side, both pieces of wood. But I think if we did this with the wenge, like I'm doing right here, I'd end up with slivers all over the place. Yeah. So don't worry about getting glue in places that you really don't want it because it's it'll come off. Yeah, I, yeah, I was taking these nice pictures of that red guitar, and check this out. I pushed my hand down and it hurt like heck. And I was like, what on earth? And I picked it up. I didn't even know I had cactus really around here, except for the fact that he told me like three days earlier, yep. like that you stepped on one there. Right. right. Didn't even think about it. Nice. Yeah, I suppose uh, going barefoot in Peru was a little different than in Iowa. Well, the funny thing is, though, there's not that many thorns on the ground unless something's fallen over. Okay. How about like vipers and stuff, though? I mean, if I was in parts of the jungle, I didn't know I wore shoes. Okay just to make sure, but if I was where I went, where I knew, where I'd been around, then I didn't, then I didn't bother putting shoes on. Yeah, see, growing up in Ottawa, I never had any problem of worrying about, like, poisonous cows, <laughs> anything. Oh, like, like uh, poisonous cows are a, a big deal. <laughs> the 
venomous Holstein I've heard of. <laughs> right? <laughs> Tell him what I just did to you. He was tipping down the wood so that he could, or so that I could wipe off the glue. And as it came down, one of the long bars hit me right, right the, there. Yeah, so I just whacked him on the head with one of these pipes. You may not want to be an apprentice with me. <laughs> the apprentice is fire. No, the, the, the uh, apprentice's master. Is that what it is? What, what is the master? What is the person? The master craftsman is fired. You're out of here. He's not passed out yet, so we're good to go. I think we've got this glued up. Now, I will let it sit actually for about three days before I take it apart. Yeah, that's what I do. So. Hey guys, thanks again for tuning in. I love it that you guys are checking this out and I can't believe it, watching week after week from all around the world, literally Poland and Greece and uh, Germany and Ashwin in the Netherlands. Uh, shout out to you, uh, always an encourager. And then just from all over the place, Crete. It's really, really cool. What a fun connection to have. So now I just need to take the blade off my coping saw and then I will feed it through the hole, put it back together inside the hole, and then I can make my cuts there. close off today outside doing a little sanding here on Corwin's main body guitar. I've got leaf blowers in the background. It's a beautiful fall day here in Minnesota. It is November 7th, which happens to be my birthday. If you're wondering, I'm 32 plus 20. I'm 52 today, so. Thinking about the fact that there are probably plenty of you thinking there's a lot quicker ways to do this than to use a sander, using a planer, using the table sander, etc., or even a hand planer would have been quicker. I don't mind sanding, I like it. I like sanding down and seeing the wood, yeah, seeing those grains pop out, kind of fun for me. So that's why. So I know there are quicker ways, but I am also trying to learn. To slow down a little bit in life on purpose to be intentional about it it's from the ruthless elimination of hurry some things that i think are probably pretty much universally accepted as being good things um, so you think about love and joy and peace and patience kindness and goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control you know, I want those things to be a part of who I am. There's a time to hurry, but if your life pattern is a life pattern of hurry, what you're going to find out is that hurry is an enemy of those things. Hurry is an enemy of love, joy, peace, patience, guys. Uh, just a quick example. You're trying to get out the door really quick and your kids are slowing you down and you're in a hurry. How are you doing with your patience? and being kind and the way that you're loving people. Just a thought, you can disagree, that's fine. I just wanna encourage you though, slow down once in a while. Hey guys, 
We'll see you next time.